Hi everyone! Today I want to discuss this animation I presented during Moho's webinar. Don't forget that you can download this file through the link in the description. I wanted to give more explanation on the process and on how I was able to achieve this animation using only one single rig. This video is intended to help users who are trying to create complex animation scenes using Moho to get a better overview of what is necessary to know beforehand and what are the most efficient tools to use in such case. I will start by saying that this rig is actually very basic. To achieve this animation, I only used bone animation, reference layers and point animation. I had several questions during the webinar regarding that part and I wanted to take this opportunity to highlight the fact that point animation is the most important part. Imagine that bone animation represents only 20% of the animation while point animation covers 80% of it. Also, it is the only way to actually simulate the Z-axis in a 2D environment. As usual, start by importing your storyboard, animatic, key poses, whichever is available to you. As mentioned during the webinar, if you want to practice, just look for the term Genga on the internet to find different sets of key poses and animatics. Depending on the source files you can find on the internet, I recommend to import an image sequence in Moho to avoid any issue related to playing a video or a GIF inside the app. Working with an image sequence will allow you to adjust the animation timing according to your needs. Then start creating your styles. I also highly recommend to always make the effort of working with styles. Just download a colored reference picture of your favorite character and use the eyedropper to pick your style colors. When you're done, start creating the character bones only. Go for a simple skeleton rig with nothing too complicated. The advantage of doing so is that we can start animating it right away. At first I wanted to separate the character into four different rigs, but I eventually decided to merge them into one single rig. I wanted to challenge myself and push the software capacities into replicating an animation that will normally require to be drawn frame by frame. In this animation, the character starts from a mid-distance from the camera, then moves away, then the camera closes up on his face to finish by unzooming far away from him. And of course, there are also a lot of head and body turns. It is important to analyze the scene and plan the workflow, meaning that you need to know in advance which tools will be needed to achieve that said animation. This way, you will be able to determine the potential issues you may have to solve throughout your animation process. Something that I realized by doing this animation is that the way a character is rigged has its own importance. One major mistake that I did was using flexi binding on vector layers that actually need a lot of mobility. Flexi binding requires your workflow to rely more on the bone themselves. In a process where the point animation is the most important part, flexi binding caused many shapes to break apart and fixing them made me waste a lot of time. On another note, in terms of staging, if the character moves away from the camera or closer to that one, you will have to make a choice between resizing the layers or moving the camera away. At first, I started resizing the character, but I quickly realized that resizing the bones were causing the vector shapes to squash and stretch. That is one of the reasons why I decided to change my approach and move only the camera. As previously mentioned, I usually start with simple shapes. Why would I do that, even though the rigging and bone animation are already done? The reason is that using simple shapes for modeling helps to see what are the potential issues you may face during the point animation phase, such as shape order or even things like having to hide some strokes during the animation. Moho's height stroke features only works on frame zero, so in order to achieve that, I downloaded a script allowing me to hide strokes throughout the animation process. Even for the detailed version of the shapes, I tried to create separated simple shapes that can easily be manipulated and deformed according to my needs. Once again, this is a very practical way to keep control over your shapes, especially if those shapes need to overlap throughout the animation, as it's the case for shades, for example. Having complicated shapes will restrict their mobility and you will have to add more of them throughout the process. Another important part that I wanted to highlight is the use of reference layers. I wanted to have an accurate view of the different body parts properly sorted through the animation process, so I decided to use reference layers right away. This was actually a mistake because I constantly updated the original layer, forcing me to manually synchronize each single reference layer after each new update. 
thus causing a major time consumption. Another thing that I would not recommend with reference layers is to have too many ships into one original layer. To be honest, it took me some time to understand the real potential of reference layers. I watched a lot of videos explaining how they work and showing how useful they are, but I didn't get how they would help someone save time. After several tests, I finally realized that they are a great way to access your shapes without spending too much time browsing through the layer groups during the animation process. The trap that I quickly fell into was grouping too many shapes in one single layer. When point animation holds a major role in your process, you want to keep things as clean as possible, and it can become very tedious to locate the shape you are looking for through a massive amount of points moving and overlapping with each other on every single frame. As a conclusion, I will say that if I were to do this animation again, here are the improvements that I would apply. First, I would create a rig in which vector shapes won't be affected when resizing the bones. It's actually easier to keep manual control over the size of each different body limb. Second, I will avoid flexi-binding as much as possible. Bones should only be guides that will drive the vector shape's rotation and location in the workspace. Third, for an animated hand, I would create additional bones to drive the finger's position and I would do the same for the hair. And number four, I will keep reference layer usage for the final version of the character. And that's it for this animation. I hope this vlog helped you to understand some of the choices I made when I decided to animate this scene. I initially uploaded the two rigs version on the website, but I updated the file and now the latest version contains only one rig. Feel free to download it through the link in the description and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to learn more tips and tricks to create anime using Moho. See you next time!